Well, fuck. Turns out I'm completely wrong about fasting. I, I have to reevaluate my life and the channel and all the things I've done for the past three years. The fuck am I going to talk about on the internet now? I mean, I already beat keto to death. But I was going to do some long fasts. My whole fucking world is rocked now. I can't believe how wrong I've been. And shit. Well, Dr. Stephen Finney, who I've always been kind of a fan of, recently uh, they posted a video on Low Carb Down Under, and this was uh, brought to my attention by Jayoti, um, who wrote me through my research submission page on scottthetruckdriver.com. Believe it or not, I do look at that, and um, to that end... You got to realize I can't get to everything that I get sent to look at, and I do the best I can. It's all just a matter of whether or not I get triggered on what makes it into the videos and what doesn't. Um, but I do see everything. I do look at everything eventually. It's, you know, it, it would be impossible for me to do a video on every single topic that you guys uh, bring to my attention. But I'll do the best I can to get to as many as I can. But anyways, you know, I had another video I was going to do today um, talking shit about the doctors because uh, one of you sent me a clip from them to uh, to talk about. And I still want to do that video because it's pertinent with the recent live stream I just did on the ins and outs of science. But this could easily you could this will be a good example of how to analyze a, a very, very scientific pre presentation given by someone whom I respect, by the way. Um, Stephen Finney has been a, a very good um, source as far as keto. Um, however, he is definitely not a fan of fasting, particularly long fasts. He really doesn't give a shit about the you know 24 hours here, 24 hours there type of fasts or anything like that. Um, so I want to go through his video and, and offer my thoughts in response to that video. This fucking Mike's pissing me off. Shit. Piece of shit. Getting into it, um, here's the, the first clip I kind of want to respond to. Um, let me just go ahead and play that shit. This is a uh, composite diagram that was published uh, in 1991, uh, and this is a composite of multiple uh, individual subjects uh, being studied over periods out past 30 days. Uh, and this shows the uh, basal metabolic rate as, present, as percent of the predicted value based on the Harris-Benedict equation, which, which was published in 1919. So this is antiquated data, but uh, as I said, it stood the test of time. And what you can see here is that when you look at the change in, in basal metabolic rate, that as you get out past five to 10 days, there is a substantial reduction in basal uh, metabolic rate and total now let me just say that I have repeatedly said this in in past videos about long fasts that you do ramp down your metabolism significantly and how you refeed 
and what you do subsequent to that fast will determine whether or not you come back from that. Um, and But he goes on to, to point out some things and that are very alarming to somebody who really kind of hasn't done their homework or hasn't done an experiment with long fasts. I've done some long fasts. Now, granted, I haven't gone past seven days um, because of the met metabolic drop and because I felt that I didn't need to. Um, at my body fat percentage, I'm starting to push it if I do a long fast. Um, now, granted, I have enough fat on board to get it done. I could do a 40-day fast and probably not die, but by the end of that, I will lose a significant amount of lean mass. I will definitely ramp down my metabolism. And in order to rebound from that, I would have to... Uh, you know, bulk, so to speak, and do a, you know, overeat and build muscle and, and do all of that and essentially gain most of that weight back, however, hopefully restructured um, into a different body composition. And, you know, a lot of times I really don't want to have to do that. So that's one of the reasons I shy away from extremely long fasts. Not to say I'm not still going to do the occasional 7 to 10 day fast. But if, uh, you know, looking at this, you would think you're going to fucking drop dead. Um, this uh, talk that he gives. So, you know, on the one hand, he is citing some good science. But there are some things he's overlooking, I believe. But I'm just a fucking asshole on the internet that he's... He, a little bit, I saw, I sensed a little passive aggressiveness towards bloggers and influencers and, and people who talk about this on the internet and of people who publish books, you know, I, I, I felt like he was addressing Dr. Fung in a lot of ways with the, the way he was uh, coming off uh, in this talk. However, the things that he's saying while he's not really telling you anything that's wrong necessarily, but he isn't telling you everything. He isn't telling you the whole story. And I'm going to point out what I found just by looking through the, some of the, the backlinks that he presented um, that caused me to look at some of his presentation in a, a different light. Um, but bottom line as I agree with his statement that a prolonged water fast will drop your metabolism. He also goes on to say, well, I think he just, let's, let's listen a little more. Energy expenditure analogous to that. And the value when you get out in the range of uh, 30 days, you're down to about uh, a 25% reduction in resting metabolism. Uh, which is a very substantial reduction in resting metabolism. In the yellow highlighted area up here at the top, uh, in the first day or two, there's actually, in some studies, particularly done in lean people, there is a bump up in resting metabolism. And that's due to the catecholamine response uh, of, that's needed for, to stimulate gluconeogenesis. And so you actually have a brief uptick. And so I've heard people say, well, fasting increases your resting metabolism. And I say, yeah, for two days. <laughs> and then what? And I think that's an important observation. Um, so this is, that was a summary. And um, he goes on later to say that that metabolic drop can last multiple years. Um, and I agree with that to a point because I've observed in myself after a long water fast and noticing the drop in metabolism because there are symptoms that, that happen. You get cold, um, your energy level goes down, your appetite goes up, um, you don't feel like doing shit, you're, you know, you're, and you're a little bit run down and that's what happens when your body says okay hold on we gotta fucking shut down some shit because there's no food here and the question is how do you ramp it back up and that's a question we've been trying to answer with diets for ages now you know if you look at the biggest loser study um, he's pulling data from the Minnesota starvation experiment which is not a true fast um, they consumed 1,500 calories a day for a very long period of time until they essentially were starving. 
which 1500 I see some of you in the comments telling me that's what you eat a day um, and probably if you ate that way for a very long period of time you'd have similar results to the Minnesota starvation experiment but what which is bad by the way you don't want you don't want those results and uh, the other problem with citing that experiment is the fact that they were dieted down to normal and just slightly below normal body weight, normal fat body fat levels. They wanted everyone to be kind of the same starting weight, and they wanted that weight to be normal. They were studying the effects of starvation, and if you're carrying around a lot of body fat, it's going to take a long time for you to starve, but he also doesn't really address that in this talk and that is a very significant piece of data he goes on several times in this talk saying he didn't cherry pick shit that everything is all up on the up and up but at the same time anybody out here who's been researching even a, a little bit on fasting knows that there's way more motherfucking data out there than what he's presenting um there's also the there's a whole bunch of stuff in russia in Russia that has been done in terms of starvation and fasting as treatments that many scientific studies were done over there they have yet to be translated some of them some of them have been lost um, but there's not a big effort to to you know bring those studies out to the forefront I mean these studies are all not repeatable because of ethics you cannot ethically starve anybody um, there's people that do it through a self-experimentation, and sometimes they get it wrong and die. And then, of course, everybody likes to point at those cases and go, see, this is dangerous. And fasting can be dangerous in some circumstances, and I'm not here to dispute that. If anything, I think this lecture from Dr. Stephen Finney is a great warning label to put on long fasts. Longer than 48 hours is what he says. I, I contend you could get away with 72. 72 is that switching point um, where your body will consume the most lean mass um, is in that first two, uh, three, day, three to four day period. And then gradually it will lower the amount of lean mass that you're losing and up the amount of fat that you're burning. And obviously the more obese you are, the better off you are. So let's listen to some more clips and, and try not to get too triggered. I didn't do just a simple composite diagram. And if you look at it here, in the, in the early initial few days, you can probably, you can sometimes see an increase in. in and um, over here, if you look, this is the area where I have gone. So I've probably lost 5% of my basal metabolic rate. Um, and, and I contend that given my results in post fast weight regain and the fact that I plateau going up, which you, if you permanently reduce your basal metabolic rate and you eat at the same amount that you did prior to the fast, theoretically you should continue to gain weight and not plateau going up. I've already done this multiple times on a ketogenic diet where, and I do stress ketogenic because I don't think it's possible to do this with carbs, um, but I've noticed I plateau going up. I'm at a plateau both ways on a ketogenic diet right now. I'm not gaining significant amounts of weight, and I'm also not losing significant amounts of weight this despite being on an aggressive alternate day fasting protocol which really doesn't fuck with your metabolism at all um because i'm not fasting longer than 40 hours um you know or 44 i think is the top end of, of adf uh, of the fasts i do and it's, and often that's fat fasting as well so and i've contended in the past that a fat fast somehow mitigates this metabolic drop but of course that is hypothesis there's no studies proving or disproving that it's just my hypothesis based on my self-experimentation and it could be completely fucking wrong i don't know i'd like to see this controlled and studied but they probably won't do it because unethical and shit um so we're left to explore this shit on our own um, 
And but f- long fasts should never be taken lightly, especially if you're on medication. You really should not attempt one unless you know what you're doing, unless you have a doctor to help wean you back onto eating again. If you do a particularly long water fast, you should have your recovery supervised um, medically. And it's questionable where you would go for that kind of medical supervision because some places know what the fuck they're doing and some places do not. So you're kind of gambling that way. But, you know, I'm no by no means advocating long fasts. In fact, um, you don't really need them in the, the term. Like my weight loss and my health markers were all greatly improved by not going past the seven day fasting mark. Um, I do want to do a 10 day and I'm going to, despite this horrible warning, I have enough body fat to do that. Um, and then I know that I'm going to probably reduce my metabolism and I want to see if I plateau going back up again. My prediction, I might move the needle down a half a pound on my set point, but overall, I will regain whatever weight I lose on a 10-day fast and end up pretty much back at my set point and not go past it. And if you're reducing your basal metabolic rate, which is your energy expenditure at rest, and you eat the same or even more because your appetite will ramp up post-fast, it'll level out and, and drop over time. Um, You'll see a rapid weight gain at first, and then it'll slow and be subtle, and then you'll just plateau again if you're keto. If you're a carb burner, I I think you won't ever ramp your metabolism up. And he really doesn't talk about that, which is surprising, being he's a keto advocate, that he's not bringing up the whole differences between a carb burning metabolism and a fat burning metabolism and i think that those two metabolisms respond quite differently from fasting he's also ignoring a very significant piece of scientific data in terms of long-term fasting of an obese person versus someone who is starving which is when you take a normal body weight person a person with 15% body fat, and starve them for 40 days. That's an entirely different situation than if you take a 600-pound motherfucker and starve them for 30 or 40 days. And the results are different. And, you know, there's questions of how much metabolic rate drop does an obese individual get from a prolonged water fast. Um, the Angus Babari case, which we're going to get into a little bit in this video, he, they followed up three years later and he didn't regain the weight. Um, he was fine. And there's anecdotal evidence all over the internet of people who have used fasting to remove their weight. And the majority of my weight loss was fasting alone. Um, now granted, not super long fast, not 30, 40 day fasts, but there are people out there who have and who follow up with periodic long fasts here and there. Sometimes they regain a shit ton of weight and they just do another long fast and they just keep doing it. I don't advocate back to back fasts or, um, doubling down on these long fasts because you're using up your storage of everything electrolytes minerals fat protein lean mass you know all of this stuff is stored in your body and there's a limited amount of it and every time you do a long fast you're dipping into that you have to rebuild afterwards if you burn a lot of lean mass you'll you can get it back by bulking essentially doing the appropriate amount of physical activity to rebuild the muscle and i think um uh, research kind of supports the fact that you will rebuild a lot quicker than if you were building from you know a place of not being that strong to begin with say you were a bodybuilder you lost a bunch of muscle to fasting I contend that you could rebuild that muscle a lot quicker than somebody who was never that strong or that bulked up and ripped and shit. Um, you know, you'd be you'd get there quicker, I think, in a recovery period. Um, but we're going to get into some of the other risks he cites that I do agree with. I just wanted to really talk about the things he's left out of his presentation that are very significant. 
um, in terms of the grand schemes of, of things. Now, he has clinical experience. He's treated people for refeeding syndrome. He's done, you know, he's seen people who have fasted and probably treated them and probably knows all their blood work and all of that. And so I'm not ruling out by any means some of the things he's saying. I just think um, he's painting a negative picture. You know, it comes off as saying it's a two-edged sore, but we only see one edge in this presentation. Um, the other edge he's claiming is just the shorter fasts are fine. Um, and they are. And yes, there is a risk with long fasts. And anybody who's doing a long fast hopefully has done the research to know that. Um, you don't want to do long fasts unless you're obese, in my opinion, um, or severely overweight. Uh, the closer you get to ideal body weight, the shorter your fasting period needs to be. Because you're not carrying around enough, a significant enough energy for your body to feel comfortable using all of it. So, the, you know, even though you might still carry around some emergency fat, um, when you do a long fast and you don't have a lot of that, you're going to burn more muscle. You're going to burn more tissue. You're going to deplete more of your minerals you're going to have issues and if you're consistently doubling down and doing these long fasts over and over and over again without i contend at least twice the length of a fast of of on a you know unrestricted ad libitum eating um so that you can replenish because your body's going to want you to do it it's going to tell you to eat more it's going to not make you full as often it's you're going to be hungrier after these fasts, um, when it comes to time to eat, you're not going to get full as quick. And it's your body's way of replenishing the stores that you depleted during the long fast. So, I, you know, I agree with him that your metabolism drops. I disagree with him that you are stuck with that low metabolism over a long period of time and shit. In uh, uh, resting metabolism, but then a long progressive thing that goes out past 30 days where the body is becoming increasingly conservative with its calories as its energy reserves are being depleted. And this is not protected very much by adipose tissue. It's protected a little bit by adipose tissue, but having extra body fat doesn't protect your body from this decline in resting metabolism. And he is right. Your metabolism does drop either way. Um, with a water fast. Um, you do lose a little bit of lean mass either way as well. This has been studied, though, um, not just in these studies, but anecdotally, people measure their, they do DEXA scans, they do fasts, and then they do another DEXA scan, and they see the differences in, in tissues that have been lost, you know, how much fat versus how much lean mass is lost. A lot of the lean mass is organ tissue shrinking. Um, you know, you don't need as much of a liver, obviously, uh, if you're fasting. Um, your liver's going to use any waste that it has, and a fatty liver's going to definitely show um, so I'm having a problem. I, I, you know, a little bit of a disconnect with it is his presentation here because he's really not going through it. Like I followed the link to, to through, but I actually had to manually type it in cause it was on the screen and I came up with this page here I'm gonna enlarge it cause it's really small right now and shit. Um, and, you know, I'm going to scroll through it a little bit as I go, but it even has this hypothetical comparison that shows the difference in the survival at 1,500 calories a day, um, you know, and it, it, it makes clear that if you're obese and you do a long fast, you're going to last a hell of a lot longer than a lean person that does it. Um, and if we take it a step further, and I'm really surprised he made no mention of Angus Barberi. You know, granted, it's a study of one, but it was a really well done study of one. I don't know what the fuck. I didn't want to print. Stop. Cancel. It was a really well done study of one. And, you know, it... it showed what happens when an obese person fasts and 
I would like to have seen a group study or a, a more thorough study. He weighed 456 pounds when he started. Um, he ended up at 190, I believe, by the end of it and stayed there for the next three years. Um, little is known after that. And they checked everything, you know. They checked all of his levels. They did supplement him. They did give him some electrolytes and some vitamins and minerals over the time, but mainly as a precautionary thing. Um, and it probably would have been unethical to, to have him go without those things. There was a period of time, I do believe, they reduced the supplementation, if I remember right. Um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, but it was a very thorough evaluation of his electrolytes, of everything. And, you know... They probably refed him properly so he didn't succumb to refeeding syndrome. And refeeding syndrome, I think, and, you know, this is my opinion. Don't fucking do anything based on it. But I do believe that refeeding syndrome comes from an overdose of glucose or basically you flood. If you flood yourself with a huge carbohydrate meal after an extremely long fast that your body um, I do believe he states it in, in that, in, even in this talk on, on what happens with refeeding syndrome. Um, and actually, I think, I think I can play that. And that's refeeding syndrome. How was this discovered? This was discovered when people were res rescued from lifeboats or rescued from situations of prolonged starvation and they'd be nice to them and they gave, him, gave them copious amounts of food. <clears throat> when you're fasted and then you suddenly feed, particularly with carbohydrates, and you put a lot of glycogen into a glycogen depleted muscle, potassium, magnesium, and phosphorus have to shift out of the plasma into the, the muscle, and you create at least oftentimes uh, uh, profound transient blood levels, lowered blood levels of those key minerals, and you can put a person into coma, heart failure, and even kill them. And that is a true thing to be worried about. So what happens when you refeed them ketogenically or just give them some fat to start off with? Um, I see a lot of people do long fasts and break their fast with carbohydrates, even healthy ones. And, you know, that's kind of dangerous, I think. Um, you are in this intense conservational fat burning mode. So putting a shit ton of glucose in the system is a bad idea if you have not had, you know any glucose coming out other than gluconeogenesis from your own fucking storage. Um, you, you need to be careful with these long fasts and how you break them. That That is well known in the fasting community. Refeeding syndrome is not a new concept. Um, and, and I think the problem that we run into the most, and, and this is where you can delve into anorexia versus fasting, is we don't know when to stop. Um, we always think of ourselves as, as fatter than we are. Um, and I see a lot of it, you know, where people look at me and they tell me they're fat and I look at them and, and they look like a healthy weight, you know, their, their midsection is below half their height. Um, their organs are probably fine. Um, they might be can, carrying some weight in their ass or their legs or their arms, but honestly, that fat has little bearing on health. It's the fat in your organs that is is the most detrimental um, and causes the most issues so it, it, there's a lot of, of warning here and I and I agree with him that you should not never be doing these fasts these long fasts lightly um, there is a very risky decision and you know I've, I haven't made that clear before I'm definitely trying to, to bring it to your attention now um, I'm pretty sure I've always said to be careful, consult a doctor, do not do it if you're medicated, do not do it if you have significant health problems. A lot of you do it anyway, and I've seen it. I've seen you guys post, I just did 30 days, I just did 40 days, and had these and such and such results, and that is your, ultimately, it's your decision. Um, I think they just passed some law now, or you can do whatever you want if you're terminally ill. Um <sighs> I would just say exercise a serious amount of, of caution when it comes to this shit. And then the other question that has not been answered in a well done prospective study is okay, if it goes down that much in 30 days and then you stop fasting, 
How soon does it come back up? I mean, that would be good to know. And I don't know of any paper that studied that in a, in a prospective way. And that's true. Um, that hasn't been studied. How to ramp up your metabolism. We should be doing that experiment because we've been fighting our metabolic drop with weight loss and obesity for years now. For years, we diet down, we pound the fuck master all day, we tank our metabolism, and then wonder why we stall, wonder why the weight comes back when we fail to exercise, when we start to eat our normal caloric intake. We, some of us gain weight back during that with no explanation to why. Well, it was, your metabolism dropped and it didn't ramp back up. So you could eat your normal calorie amount for the day and gain weight because you've been eating 1500 fucking calories and then pounding the fuck master to burn off another thousand all this time and you suddenly think you can go back to your maintenance calories and keep the weight loss it's not how it works not how the body works and the longer you do the eat less move more low calorie model of weight loss you can just Look at the Minnesota starvation experiment because that's exactly what they did to them motherfuckers. And they were eating each other's body parts and fucking losing their minds. And and, and at the same time, if, if they refed, they had refeeding syndrome. They probably eventually regained any weight afterwards. Um, there's not a lot of studies... On what happens after, you know, the biggest loser study is probably the closest really decent study on, on metabolism after weight loss, but it doesn't really t answer the question of, of how quickly we can ramp up our metabolism. It just basically points out to see, look, all that metabolic drops and it stayed that way. Um, meanwhile, they were probably just eating shitty foods and lots of carbs and I do believe, my hypothesis is, that eating a high-carb diet will not ramp up your metabolism. Um, no matter what kind of carbs you're eating, you know, whether it's shitty processed carbs or healthy carbs, healthy carbs being kind of a debatable, it, you know, your metabolism probably isn't going to fucking go back up. And there's really no study that proves that or disproves that. Like I said, there's the anecdotal stuff. Um, and you can tell how fucked you are metabolically by how much weight and how quickly you regain it after you've stopped doing whatever it is you did to lose the weight. Stop fasting? What happens? What happens if you stop fasting and eat keto? What happens if you stop fasting and eat a high-carb diet, low-fat? What happens if you eat all whole foods or paleo? What happens if you go vegan? Um, you'll notice a, a lot of the things with the vegan diet, I contend the vegan diet is a form of permanent fasting and caloric restriction because you're restricting fat. In a lot of cases, there's very few vegans who are high-fat or keto. There are some. Um... But you notice they have, a lot of vegans have the similar results of starvation. You see emaciation. You see uh, a lowered amount of muscle and lean tissue. You see this very, very thin stature. Now, there are some exceptions before all you vegans, you know, get your pitchforks out and start fucking stabbing me with them. You know, it, there are differences in that, you know, there's always the unicorns that somehow manage to persevere, and they probably do so by doing things outside the normal vegan box. Um, whether that be eating shit tons of nuts or some other way of getting excess protein. Um, but we can have that debate another time on what they're missing out on, you know. But most bodybuilders that I come across that were vegans end up quitting because they can't get the gains. That they want. You can get some gains. If you work hard at it. Probably. But the average motherfucker isn't working hard at it. The average vegan isn't doing any of that level of exercise. Two, three hours a day. That would require, be required to build that level of muscle mass. Um, 
so that's the other thing you got to worry about. You're going to lose some of your gains if you do a long, long fast. So is long fast bad? If you're morbidly obese, I still contend a long fast isn't going to kill you, assuming you're healthy, assuming you do all of these things that you should, you know, it's not to be done lightly. There should be precautions taken. It should be medically supervised. There are clinics that do this. There are fasting getaways. They cost a lot of money. So a lot of people just end up doing it on their own because they can't afford to do that shit. And you can bet your ass insurance isn't going to cover this shit. Um... And so that kind of leaves people little choice, you know, they have nowhere to go. So they end up doing this on their own. And I see a lot of that. And I've had lots of comments from people who've done longer fasts than me. Um, it has Dr. Finney's speech turned me off from doing long fasts? No, it has not. I know my limits. I know that if and at any time during a fast, I don't feel right. I don't, you know, or something is going wrong, or I'm having lots of cramps, for example, or lots of issues, I end the fast. Your body's pretty good at letting you know you enough's enough. And the longer you go before your body says, hey, dickhead, time to eat. And I know I mean it, asshole, it's time to eat. And you'll know, you'll know when that time is. You know, listening to our bodies is something we fail to do regularly. It's how we got in this mess to begin with. And we need to start listening. And you don't need to do long fasts. You know, they're an extreme tool for various health conditions besides obesity. I think they're not that effective in terms of obesity because of the metabolic drop. It's similar to doing shit tons of exercise and not feeding your workouts. You get the same metabolic drop. It's similar to eating 1,300 calories a day for seven years or however fucking long you do that. You're going to get that same metabolic drop. It's not just fasting that causes this. Not eating enough, period, causes metabolic drop. It's your body knows when you're not in balance, and tries to balance and will balance you in excess it will make you gain more weight to compensate for the fact that you went dipped in the first place it's like we don't want to fucking have this shit happen again motherfucker so i'm gonna make you about 10 pounds fatter now and the whole thing that i've been fighting against is the the set point and that set point changes it does change gradually over time it has for me and it's very slow to to battle that. But that is ultimately what we're battling. We are battling our metabolic rate. We are fighting to get our body fat level at a, a place of stability that is within a healthy range, which I'm at. I'm in the healthy range. I'm not in the fuckable range, but I'm in the healthy range. Um, a lot of people keep pushing for that fuckable range. And sometimes that fuckable range is below where the body wants you to be. And the more you pursue that, the more your body will fight back. And the more complications you can run into, like, for example, doing a long fast at 15% body fat, you're probably fucking hurting yourself. Um, And not just short-term, long-term hurting yourself. Um, But... There's not a lot of of modern science one way or another on this because of the ethical concerns. So I'm going to put the links to all of this shit in my description, including the follow through of of this uh, analysis that he drew one of his graphs from. Um, I did find that um, there was a lot of of good information in this. you know, if not a little bit biased and cherry picked in some spots, but at the same time, this is another thing, you know, with science that we need to think about is, you know, who did this study? What were their motivations? What were they trying to prove? What were they trying to disprove? Um, I see a little bit bias towards a low calorie diet in this, this writing. Um, Because I do know that it's already been proven that a low-calorie diet drops your metabolism every bit as much as uh, starvation or fasting does. 
Um, in fact, a lot of the starvation studies he's referring to involve just caloric restriction instead of outright starvation. So, you know, make of it what you will. You don't have to do long fasts. It's not a requirement. I try them periodically, and I do mean rarely, you know. You'll notice I didn't do any, I haven't done a long fast uh, since my last fat fast, I think was February. Um, and that was a seven day fat fast or slash water fast. It was like a hybrid because I was experimenting with metabolic rate drop. And if fat fasting was a way to, to prevent that, there's evidence to suggest that, uh, you know, having 600 calories here and there throughout a longer fast could keep the metabolic drop at bay. I don't know. Um, these are things that we have to self-experiment to figure out, and that's what I'll continue to do. But, you know, like I said, I can't disagree with some of the things he's saying. Let's look at his summary here. What the fuck was that? And, you know, you you kind of see where he's leaning with this talk and why we didn't see anything positive about long fasts, um, despite there being evidence of positive results from long fasts, not just from Angus, but from the numerous clinical data that, that, you know, that has been out there for people who have used long fasts to successfully become healthy, to cure numerous ailments, to lose a lot of their body fat percentage and keep it off long term. (laughs) And also, it doesn't do anything to explain the bounce back of metabolism. You can ramp up your metabolism. Your body wants energy balance, both going down and going up. The kind of foods you eat play a large role in what the fuck your body's going to do and shit. You know, if you're eating the wrong foods, you're not going to ramp up your metabolism after a long fast. That is a fact. And you can see it by people who do long fasts. They eat the wrong foods afterwards and regain every last amount of weight and still retain that metabolic drop to where they really have to work hard to not regain more weight than they started with. There are people out there who have reported doing long fasts and gaining more weight afterwards. And that is a very big sign that they not only did they get the metabolic drop, but they didn't ramp up afterwards. So if you plateau going up after a long fast, chances are you raised your metabolism. If you do not plateau going up after a long fast, and that's just eating normal, ad libitum, chances are you tanked your metabolism and that didn't bounce back. That's kind of our only way of figuring out that for ourselves without going into some fucking chamber and having our VO2 max and all of that shit analyzed or getting dipped in some tank or some, you know, having all kinds of shit shoved up our ass to figure out what the hell happened. No, we figure out, hey, did I regain all the fucking weight and then some? Then, yeah, I dropped my metabolism. I need to be careful um, in the future. And at the same time, I need to try and get my metabolism ramped up before I try any more shit. Because if you double down and you keep doing it while your metabolism's dropped, you're never going to ramp your metabolism back up. So you need significant periods where you're not doing long fasts. You can still do the ADF or, you know, the 16 and 8 or 23 or whatever short-term intermittent fasting protocol is. But in terms of doing long fasts, they need space between them to rebuild. Fasting, you're using shit up. You're tearing shit down. You're making new cells. You're, you're recycling a lot of shit. And then you need to rebuild all the shit you tore down. All the shit that was used up needs to be put back. And the only way to do that is to eat a full diet. Let your body tell you when. Um... If you're keto, if you're car burner and you eat processed foods and sugars, your body ain't going to tell you shit. It'll let you eat yourself to death and still make you hungry. Um, but if you're, if you break a long fast with keto, a high fat, low carb diet, let your body 
dictate your food level. You might gain more weight. You might gain all the weight back from the fast. Maybe you'll even be a little bit different in terms of weight gain. You can go carnivore, too. There's That's an option. I would like to see what would happen if you did a long fast and broke that fast as a carnivorous human being. Um, but it's whether or not you get to keep your results. Um, I contend that long fasts have a role to play in terms of long-term fucking weight loss and reduction of your set point. And it doesn't, it's not all done in one shot over time in between fasts, You need to feed properly. You need to make your body think everything's all good. You need to ramp up your metabolism. Obviously, you know, if you can plateau going up, that means you're good. Your metabolism's where it should be. You're ready for another fast. That's the thing. That's what you need to measure. You know, a lot of us, we, we do that. And we're so paralyzed, scared that we're going to regain weight that we refuse to feed ourselves properly after a long fast and we double down and we continue fasting and fasting and more fasting and you have to fucking feed yourself all right there's a, that's where you to get into that slippery eating disorder mode that you know where you just don't give yourself the nutrition you need that's not how fasting is supposed to work the refeed is every bit as important as the fast it can kill you if you do it wrong the refeed period it can undo your results it can cause you to regain all the weight and then some if you don't refeed with the proper foods after a long fast and you just need to to go into this realizing that that's how complicated this is it's not as simple as just oh i'm gonna drink water and lose all this fucking weight and shit and everything's great yes i lost the weight and i drink the water the water saved my no God damn it. That's not how it works. It's not how it works. You just need to to go into this knowing the ins and outs. Um, do your homework. I always say that. I feel like the substitute teacher that nobody fucking listens to. Get out there and research. You know, Don't take one person's word for it. Don't just take Steve Finney's word for it. There's plenty of fasting guru doctors out there that can show you the other evidence um, and weigh the evidence for yourself when you make your decision. And a lot of you have done your own self-experiments. You've seen your own results. You know your limits. You've seen the pitfalls of fasting, a lot of you. Um, you'll, some, of, some of us have to discover those the hard way and on our own. But ultimately, you know, it, this is not, a long fast is not something you should do lightly. I've, you know... I always use caution. That's why I haven't done a 10 or 30 day fast yet. Because I want to know every fucking in and out. Every possible problem. And I'm well aware of most of the problems. I can probably pull off an unsupervised 30 day fast. Um, but I know that I'm taking a lot of risk if I do that. And I also know my body weight isn't quite up to that. You know, I think I'd be pushing it past 10 days or even 20 days would, would probably be rock bottom for me. I'm pretty sure I'd be in the 170s at 20 days and that's pretty low and I would be using a lot of lean tissue in a lot of my stores. I also know that I get cramps occasionally, which means my electrolytes aren't quite up to the task of a long fast either. So it's these things to all keep in mind. That it's not something you just say, all right, I'm going to fucking fast, yay. You you have to think about it and think of, of the results and the the problems and the, the fine print. And I would look at Steve Finney's lecture here as the warning label on the prescription strength drug that is fasting. And it is. It's powerful. It has powerful life-altering effects, health-changing effects, and it can either benefit you or harm you depending on the context in which you use it and the diet with which you accompany it with. And if you're doing long fasts with a standard American diet, I would say you are at high risk for something to go wrong, be it the metabolic drop and weight regain, be it um, you know, the refeed syndrome or, you know, other issues that just pop up when you eat unhealthy. 
and then you put another stress on your body like a long, prolonged fast. That being said, if it's under 48 hours, you're pretty much not going to have a problem at all. Unless you're starving prior to that, in which case you're already kind of fasted to begin with. Um, just remember, fasting's only half the, the, the formula. The other half is what you eat how and how you rebuild what you used up during the fast and how you replenish things. That is equally, if not more, important than just spending some time drinking water and black coffee and losing weight. But what the fuck do I know? I'm not a fucking doctor like Stephen Finney. I'm just a fucking truck driver fucking slash internet motherfucker that, that talks shit in front of cameras and shit. What the hell do we know? And I'm starting to notice a lot more um, pushback towards those of us who speak up and give these opinions on, on health and lifestyle on YouTube um, or any other blog, for that matter. And... And rightly so. We should be questioned. We should be accountable for the things we say and do as far as um, how right or wrong. We should be open to criticism. Um, that's why I'm, I'm very vehemently saying that I am not an expert. I, I'm just bringing your attention to things. I'm, I'm pointing things out. I'm asking questions that should be asked of these motherfuckers. All right. If I was in the audience with Stephen Finney, he probably would have hated my ass because I would have just been raising my hand going, what about this? What about that? I didn't see a, a Q&A session at the end of this. I would have loved to have seen a Q&A session because I'm sure there were people in the audience going, oh, oh, oh. But we didn't get to see that, did we? So there's that. Anyways, that's where I'm at with this. Thank you. Um, to Jody or <laughs> Jody, I know I'm supposed to pronounce it Jody. My bad. Um, for providing me with that amount of triggeredness and kind of bringing my attention to some of the new stuff on fasting, and it's not all roses, you know. And if we just listen to all the pro gurus and we don't take the time to, you know, listen to people speaking out against our argument, we could miss out on important information like the metabolic drop. That is a fact. Like the the refeed syndrome. That is a fact. Like the evidence showing that it's hard to ramp your metabolism back up. Also a fact contextual to the diet, I argue, but still a lot of people are going to run into that. And if you ignore shit because you don't agree with it and you don't take the time to really just sit here like we just did, go through it, piece together some shit, go follow through, don't just listen to his interpretation because it's going to be a little different than yours if you actually read some of the shit. And that's how we grow our knowledge base. It's how we know what the fuck we're doing. You know, it, a lot of people will look at this this lecture and be like, well, that's it. Fasting's bad for you. Um, and that's really not what I'm getting out of it. I'm getting that fasting requires a warning label because there are a lot of things that could go wrong. There are a lot of things that could trip you up because of the amount of variables involved on who's doing the fasting. There's so many things that can go wrong or so many things that could cause a complication. You know, we don't know when we're telling you fasting's good for you. I don't know your electrolyte situation. I don't know your medication situation. I don't know how much body fat percentage you have. I don't know how much lean mass you have. Um, if your lean mass starts to get low, you could run into problems, even though you still have a lot of body fat. Um, so definitely you should be building muscle if you're doing lots of long fasts. I, I agree with that. You could go pound the fuck, master. Yep, but feed it properly if you intermittent fast and do long fasts. Um, it, you got to rebuild. You know, if you notice you lost your gains because you did a long fast, it's important to go rebuild some of them games. Maybe not all of them. I don't know. Depends on what you need. But you need to build them to a healthy level because the, well, part of them gains is your heart, you know, and it's a pretty important organ. Um, and part of it is your electrolyte balance, which is a function and very important to all of your muscles, including your heart. 
and you know your bones obviously that's a, a very interesting place where we get some minerals when we're doing long fasts that needs to be replenished and does regenerate by the way Something he didn't really talk about either was the, the fact that you do get a lot from bones. And another thing that he didn't talk about that I find interesting as fast is gut microbiota also provides you with several nu nutrients. They are part of this equation. Um, um, there's amino acids that are provided. It can even provide glucose through fermentation in some cases. It can even provide alcohol. I just read that the other day. We'll go over that in another video. But uh, it's, you know, your gut biota doesn't die instantly when you fast. It starts to die and, you know, the, the stronger ones eat the littler ones. And you, of course, get some of the nutrition, some of the electrolytes, some of the energy, some of the fatty acids, some of the amino acids, you get a lot of that from that little war that goes on for survival when you do a long fast with your gut microbiome. There's no science study in that shit. What happens to your gut when you fucking do a long fast? Um, last I checked, you still shit a lot during a long fast and sometimes uncontrollably. And that tells me that there's some still some stuff going on in your gut. You know, even as laid out as 30 or 40 days, um, I don't think uh, the gut bacteria dies off completely. I do think that some of it does, and then whatever's left is the one that can eat the other one. Um, whether or not that's good bacteria left or bad, that's all something for someone a hell of a lot smarter than me to figure out. But I do know that that is a factor with which we, a resource that our body pulls from when we are in prolonged periods without food. So, that's that. If you found this fucking video helpful or enlightening or enter entertaining in any way, please head to scottthetruckdriver.com and throw some bucks in the virtual tip jar. Check out my blog while I'm there. I post all of my videos there. So, you, in addition to liking, subscribing, commenting, and engagement here on YouTube, if you want to help grow the channel, also check there in case you're not finding out when I post new shit. I always post it on my blog on there also i link put my actual links to the videos and embed them in there so like if you want to easily watch through all of those you can do so in the blog section of my website there's also the research page which led me to this video um and i do welcome submissions there be patient i'm not going to get to everything i'm going to do the best i can and there are some people that are getting upset if i don't get back to you you know or they comment or they send a message and i don't reply you know i'm one human being i'm doing this as a one-man band you know there's no one helping me with this channel there's no one doing any of the work except me and it's hard to keep up with everything i do the best i can so just be patient come to all the live streams and talk to me then because you're likely to get my attention and have me say some shit um during those as well and, and just keep trying uh, you know eventually you know the squeaky wheel gets oiled you know and i will <laughs> respond um and i have like a backlog of of comments and research articles and and things that you guys have provided that i'm slowly churning through and but please keep them coming because it, it, it all gets contributed to my overall knowledge and it, it sometimes sends me into rabbit holes of research that otherwise I might not have explored. So it's definitely helping when you guys submit stuff through the research on my website or through the comments here. You guys do it sometimes. Sometimes you guys do it on Facebook. So please, you know, go check that out. Um, also, if you shop on Amazon, you can go through every every blog post. I try and post an, a, an, an Amazon search link. You can s click through there and buy whatever the fuck you want on Amazon and help the channel out without you know spending extra money or whatever if you were going to buy some shit anyway. Um, pretty much on almost every post, I'm putting an Amazon thing. That's something I manually put in. Um, I try and do a little search term that's relevant to whatever the video is when I do that. Um, but I can't really post those on the YouTube and the, the description. I post those on the website. So if you want to help out the channel 
and you shopping at Amazon, you can go through one of those links and I'll get credit for that. And that helps the channel as well. Um, and I, you know, the channel needs all the help it can get because it's been rough. But this month we're back on track thanks to some generous contributors who uh, stepped up in the past week or so. So we're good for now. You don't have to break out the pocketbook if you want to help out. But I'm just giving you avenues in case you do. As far as what I'm doing the rest of the week, I don't know if you noticed, but I am a little under the weather. I got some kind of cold going, and it happened after I went kayaking. I'll uh, probably throw up some of the footage from when I was kayaking, because I do have some stuff I want to talk about, and I'm going to probably use that footage as a, a backdrop for it. Um... So I'm going to try and churn out videos. I've, I've exp I'm experimenting with, you know, easy setups like this where I can sit down and just go at it um, without a lot of production work. So we'll see, you know, what you guys think. You guys seem to like these, these uh, talks just as much as my green screen work and just as much as me walking around in the world. But I want to do a lot for my own personal health and wellness. I like getting out into the world. But that's it. This is a long-ass video. It was a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. I was hoping to maybe shoot for a half hour. Here we are at an hour. So there's that. Have a nice motherfucking day and shit.